Yeah. Woo! Bunch of sleepy heads. <laughs> Isn't it great to be in God's house this morning? Amen. So, on the count of three, we're going to share together and we're going to yell out, Happy New Year! God bless you. Ready? One, two, three. Happy New Year. God bless you. Let's stand to your feet. Things have changed. You'll be looking in your bulletin, and I've, we've made a few changes this morning, so uh, don't exactly follow those numbers, but uh, we're going to kick it off with Are You Washed in the Blood 330, and stand to your feet if you're able. Let's just celebrate Jesus this morning. Number 330 in your hymnal, Are You Washed in the Blood, okay? Sing it together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the soul? Let's find two or three people right around you and just uh, tell them, Happy New Year. God bless you. I'm glad you're here at Butte Creek Baptist Church this morning. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robe be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you gone? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that it's uh, better than the last two, right? Yes. Yeah, Amen. that's what we're going to pray about. Well, Father in heaven, we do pray that you might be glorified in us this year, Lord, this day, Lord God. We pray that, Lord God, you'd be blessed by the singing, by the, the fellowship, and by the teaching, Lord. And, and we're just blessed by being here with you, Father. We at, invite your Holy Spirit to fill us and to uh, teach us, Lord, and to help us to have joy in you, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you for your singing and sharing this morning.
Praise you. This Wednesday evening, we will not have a potluck or a Bible study. The, uh, the choir is going to uh, have practice. The Wednesday after this Wednesday, we will have a special speaker. Jeff um, is going to come and give us a Bible study. We're very um, looking very much forward to that. Um, women's Bible study, January 7th and 21st, and that's Facing Your Fears with Faith. If you have any questions, you can call Linda Tennyson. Her number's in the, in the uh, bulletin. Men's Bible study, the book of Acts with Pastor PK. That's every Tuesday morning at 10, and there's always goodies. Uh, last, uh, the last one we had was just wonderful. Um, prayer requests, you can call Flo Downing. Her number's in there. And I would like to, before we finish today, I'd like to pray for uh, Ron Rushton, he's sick for Flo. She got her surgery changed, canceled, if you will. And Connie Stanley, who normally, normally plays the piano, her family is down with uh, COVID and various, her husband got kicked by a horse. So what would you rather have, COVID or get kicked by a horse? COVID. We'll give you a choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luke 2.30 says, For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Thursday morning at 8.30, there's a, a, a Tops Take Off Pound Sensibly meeting in the church fellowship hall. And then the quilters and the crafters, they meet Thursday at 10 o'clock. And let's see. What else? I guess that's it. That's it. Yes. That's not it. Well, I feel corrected. <laughs> Opportunity for ministry. Um, sign up to bring cookies for um, Sunday morning or to clean up after church, which is just, you know, dumping the coffee. And it's not a big deal, you know, to clean the church. It's just <laughs> taking care of the leftover food and stuff. So we have sign up sheets for both of those to start off. There's always an opportunity to serve God in some fashion. And you don't have to be a preacher to serve God. You, you can just be you and serve God for sure. Anybody else? Okay. Hey, so uh, we've got those sick people. Can we go ahead and can we have prayer for... If you're in the congregation today and, and you feel like you need prayer, would you just lift your hand just nice and easily? There's probably people that are that are here that just need God's guidance this year. And then additionally, uh, we've got those that were announced that are struggling with health. So let's stop and let's pray right now. Absolutely. Well, Father in heaven, we do come before you humbly asking you to hear our prayers. You told us, Lord, that we can come before the throne of grace to find mercy and help in our times of needs. Father, we pray for uh, Ron Rushton, for Flo, for Connie's entire family, Lord God, that you'd bless them and that you'd help them with these physical ailments, Lord. That, Father, you would make a time where Flo can get her surgery, that you bring Ron back to us soon, Lord God, and that you'd uh, help Eugene with the, the horse's um, uh, kick to heal quickly and, and Jeremy from the COVID, Father, and we'll just praise you for ever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Steve. Isn't it great to have Pastor Steve back? He's been on a little vacation. And let's continue to sing this morning in your hymnal 549. We're going to sing the first, third, and fourth verse. First, third, and fourth verse. Higher ground in your hymnal 549. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground, Lord lift me up, Lord, lift me up and, let me stand. and let me stand, my faith on heaven's table. Song of saints on high. 
lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane. Lift me up and let me stand, let me stand. by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher way that I have found. Lord, lift me up a higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven. glory 521 in your hymnal 521 a new name in glory I was once a sinner but I came pardoned to was freely given and I found that he always kept his word there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine oh yes it's mine and the white robed angels sing the story a sinner has come a sinner has come home And if you're able, we're going to sing the third verse. Tell the story A sinner has come Sinner home. has come home There's a new name Written down in glory And it's mine Oh yes it's mine With my sins forgiven I am bound for heaven Nevermore to roam With my sins forgiven Amen. Remain 
standing if you're able. He touched me in your hymnal 505. Just a praise chorus we're going to lift up to the Lord this morning. In your hymnal 505, he touched me. Just sing this out this morning. Give it to Jesus. Shackled by a heavy burden, need the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no Father in heaven, thank you for touching us. What a touch it was, too, Lord. You touched us enough to save our souls. That's amazing, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for everything, for who you are. Thank you for sacrificing yourself in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious life, your horrific death, your amazing resurrection, your ascension into heaven, and your intercession for each one that calls on your name. We call on your name today, Lord. Please bless us that we might bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. We could have the fellows come forward. We'll take the offering. Yeah, and the kids can be dismissed. Yeah, thank you. That doesn't mean adults, that means kids. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you. So, Father in heaven, we do hold up this offering to you. Lord, we just pray that you'll bless it and increase it to the needs of this community.
Lord, we want to be a light in this community. So, Father, we just pray that you'll be blessed by what we give and blessed by uh, the energy and the praise that we give to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, Bob. Sometimes sitting down is just so pleasant, isn't it? <laughs> pray that you bless your word to us, Lord. It is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path in a very evil world, Lord. We just ask that, Lord, you'd fill us with uh, wisdom and discretion, understanding and knowledge as we listen to your word, as we uh, meditate upon it, Lord. And we'll give you the praise and glory in this new year. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I was thinking about it this morning that, you know, it's, it's kind of... I think it's kind of fitting that the new year, the first day of the new year, falls on a, a communion Sunday. You know what I mean? Because maybe uh, this is a harbinger of good things to come. Because we certainly want uh, 2023 to be better than 2021 20, and 22, don't we? Yeah, for sure. There's a phrase in Latin called carpe diem. You know what that means? Seize the day. That's right. And I think for Sunday, uh, the 1st of January, 2023, we should not only seize the day, but we should seize the month, and let's seize the year, too. <sighs> Ephesians chapter 5, you don't necessarily have to turn to it, to it if you don't want to, but Ephesians chapter 5, starting in verse 15, basically says, seize the day. Here's what it says. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Well, I think that there's something we can all agree with is that these days seem to me like they're more evil than they've been in the past anyway. And I think that that's because as we see the second coming of Jesus Christ, Coming nearer and nearing, we're seeing the enemy working harder and harder to try to thwart us from our goals. It says, be very careful then. And it, it doesn't say, just be careful. It says, be very careful. Then how you live it gives us two choices, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. You know... There is a lot of opportunity to serve God in our lives. And the, those that are wise will take advantage of every opportunity 
they can. You know, I know that in my life anyway, I've, I've missed a lot of opportunities. And, you know, thank God I've, I've also taken advantage of a few. But we need to think about the opportunities that God gives us. Now, um, Sue gave us opportunities this morning. We, we need somebody to, to bring some goodies in for Sunday morning. Not a big deal, but it's still an opportunity. It's an opportunity. And when I uh, uh, quote a couple more scriptures to you, you're going to see what I'm saying. And there's an opportunity, you know, to help with the children. There's an opportunity to, uh, to do so many things for the Lord. Listen to what he says here. He says, Therefore, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So the Lord is going to give us an example of foolishness and an example of doing the Lord's will. Here we go. He says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Now that would have been probably a really good message last night, right? <laughs> I am sure that none of you got drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Debauchery means a sensuality, okay, like a... Uh, especially in terms of a sexual sensuality. And I think that all of us know probably that drinking too much probably does lead to sensuality. It's a proven fact. So that would be what an unwise person would do. He says, instead, be filled with the Spirit. Oh, that's good advice. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I love this. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Now, even if you're not a good singer, okay, you can do that privately, and then you become the best singer in the world, right? It says, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In another portion of Scripture, it says for us to pray without ceasing. To just be in that mindset of praying. You know, um, when I, I've told you this before, but whenever I see somebody walking on the street, walking, I always pray for them. Lord, please reveal yourself to that person. I mean, it's really easy and get in the habit of it, and pretty soon you're, you're praying kind of constantly, you know what I mean? And here he says, um, and I love this too, he says, always giving thanks. Now he doesn't say always giving thanks for the good things. He says, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. Everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to talk to you about five different, or excuse me, four different points in how we can know and serve God, okay? The first point is going to be for us to understand God's purpose for our life. That's point number one. Point number two is don't dwell on the past, all right? Point number three is face the present. Face what's going on right now. And point number four is going to be make an effort, all right? Make an effort. So back to point number one, which is understanding your purpose in life. You don't have to turn there, but in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, it's Paul tells us to be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. He says, as dearly loved children, live a life of love as Christ loved us. Now, how do we, how can we be imitators of God, right? I mean, God is God. And what we know about God, we know through Jesus Christ, don't we? And we know through His Word. So it says here this, God first loved us, which is why we love Him, right? None of us love God first. If you think you love God first, well, you're just wrong. Okay? He loved you first. That's the way it goes. And it says here, be imitators of God but he doesn't stop there. He says, as dearly loved children, we are dearly loved children of God the Father, the supreme authority of the universe. There is none higher than God the Father. 
And he loves us, and that's amazing. And he says, live a life of love as Christ loved us. How do we do that? How do we imitate God? We love each other. That's what we do. That's, that's the imitation of God because God loved us. And didn't he love us when we didn't deserve us? He said he loved us while we were still his enemies. You got any enemies? Well, love them. Or her. Or them. In John 13, 15, listen to what Jesus says. He says, For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. Jesus Christ is our example. We are to do as he has done. Matthew 4.19 gives us the simplest equation of all. He says, come follow me. Come follow me. How do you follow Jesus Christ? Well, the first thing you've got to know is you've got to know what he said. And how do we do that? Well, we know what <clears throat> his word says. I gave a Bible to <coughs> excuse me, someone for Christmas this year. And as she was reading through it, she said, why are these words in red? I want you to think about that for just a minute. She had so little knowledge of the Bible that she asked a simple question, why are these words in red? You know, most of us know that those were the words of Jesus Christ, huh? Yeah. So how can we... Uh, imitate Jesus Christ, we got to know Him. We've got to know His Word. And that's why it's so important for us to attend Bible study and to do uh, devotions in the morning. E even if it's only... I heard this, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but uh, you can read through the Bible, the entire Bible in one year if you read three chapters a day. Is that true? Three chapters a day. You can read one in the morning, read... One lunch, you take your Bible with you and read one in the evening and you're going to get a lot of food that way both physically and spiritually. So for, Jesus says, For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done unto you. Come, follow me. That command is just as applicable today as it was when Jesus uttered those words. And he doesn't stop there. You see, what is, what is the point we're looking at? Understand your purpose in life. What is our purpose in life? Jesus Christ lets us in on it in John chapter 17, verse 4. You don't have to turn there. It says this. Listen to what Jesus prayed to his own Father. He said, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. Isn't that amazing? You know, on the cross, Jesus said it is finished. But here, we're seeing in John 17, Jesus Christ says, I have finished the work that you've given me to do. His mindset was so set on God, on, on obeying Him, and on doing what's right, on following Jesus Christ, on imitating God, that He could say, Several hours before he said it was finished, he says, I have finished it. That was his mindset. I have finished the work that you sent me. You know, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be able to say that to the Lord, wouldn't you? I'd like to be able to say, let's read it again. It says, I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work you have given me to do. God's given each one of us gifts. And he's given each one of us work to do. Now that might be raising a family in, uh, in, in the sphere of, of godliness. That might be uh, uh, being a music director. That might be being uh, a, a good worker, a good employer, or a good employee. I mean, there's everything we do should be fashioned and should have the, the flavor of God in it. Everything. Well, the second point I want to make is this. <sighs> Don't dwell on the past. Okay? Now, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna. i tell you a story in just a minute, but listen to what uh, Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. He says this. 
One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Did you know that God has called us heavenward to receive a prize? We're, we're, we've got an inheritance, my friends. And, and here's the deal, is that God has given all authority and all glory to Jesus Christ. And we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means we share in his inheritance. Guess what Jesus Christ is going to inherit? Everything good. The universe. We're going to be inheritors of the universe. Man, I want one of them jetpacks. You know what I mean? So I can fly to these different places. I probably won't need a jetpack. Forget the bad. Forget the bad things that have happened in your life. Learn from them, but forget them. Isaiah 43, 25 says this, I am he who blots out your transgressions and remembers your sins no more. If God doesn't remember your sins, why should you? Why should I? You know, I, as a parent, I've got two kids, as many of you know, and... This last year, I don't know why, but I got kind of sentimental. And I went back and remembered some of the things that I wish I'd have done differently as a parent, okay? Maybe not got as mad when the toilet overflowed and we had little Lincoln logs floating all over <laughs> the living room, right? I got so mad my kids were cowering in a, in a corner. That's because I had to clean it up. But was that, really, was that really worth getting mad at? Not really, was it? You know, we can't change what we did in the past. What we can do is we can change what we're doing right now. Every day from this point on is the future. Every day is the beginning of the rest of our lives, as they say. So don't, don't dwell on the past. Don't dwell on the bad. And you know what? Don't live your lives pining away about past good times either. Have you ever met somebody that all they can talk about is the past and the good old days? Well, you know, <laughs> well, I can remember when you could buy a 1970 Chevelle SS 454, 450 horse, black with white stripes. I did it. I, I bought it for $2,200 and a dishwasher, a portable dishwasher. And of course, that car is worth about $150,000 a day. I was too smart to keep it, though. <laughs> Do I dwell on that? Yes. <laughs> Every time I watch Barrett Jackson auctions, I dwell on that. Oh my gosh. You know, I think we remember the good times in our life. I mean, that I remember going camping with my kids and doing all kinds of fun things, but you know, that's not where I'm living right now. I'm living right here. And going back to the kid example, okay, is I have the opportunity as a parent of grown children to influence their lives as best as I can. So, I don't live in the past. I don't dwell on the bad things or the good things. I'm going to live it right now and I'm going to try to do the best I can to influence anybody that will listen to me toward the Lord. Well, we need to understand what our purpose in life is. Okay, It's to glorify God. We need to not dwell in the past, but we need to press on, like Paul says, straining for what is ahead of us. And what is ahead of us, I'm telling you, is just absolutely mind-blowing. None of us. Jesus Christ talked more about hell than he did heaven. Because he didn't want anybody to go there. And how do you describe heaven? You know, the Spirit says, The eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. 
and are called according to his purpose. Well, the third thing is I want you to think about is facing the present. Since this is show and tell confession time, <laughs> one of my things that I have said many, many, many times in my life is one of these days, one of these days I'm going to go there. One of these days I'm going to do this. One of these days, anybody else can identify with that? Okay, yeah. You know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. No buts, ands, or ifs. We need to face the present. I think about the story in John chapter 11, verse 21 about Martha and Mary. You remember Martha, their brother Lazarus died and Martha came to the Lord because the Lord had delayed his coming for four days. Why did he delay his coming for four days? Because in the Jewish religion, a body was to be in the tomb or the grave for four days before they were considered gone. Okay? So Jesus waited until that fourth day. And he came. Lazarus is in the tomb. And Martha comes up to Jesus and says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Well, see, from her perspective, that's what it looked like, right? But from Jesus' perspective is, no, I wasn't supposed to be here. I waited. He didn't say this, I'm sure, but I waited purposefully so that this could be, no doubt, a miracle sent by God, raising someone from the dead. They even said he's, he's going to stink. Well, after four days of being dead, he probably would stink, I suppose. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Facing the present, we should not live life around the ifs, ands, or buts. But here's what we should do. In Hebrews 4.15, let me read you a scripture, okay? It says this, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Wow. I mean, it says in the Bible that both Jesus Christ, his ministry right now, he's still ministering, is to make intercession for those that call on his name. That's what he does. He makes intercession to the Father. We come to the Father. We come to, to God through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man comes to the Father unless he comes through me. So when we pray to the Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And here it says that when we, when we pray in Jesus' name, when we come to, to God through Jesus, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, it says we can approach the throne of the throne of grace. We're talking about God's throne here, my friends. God, God the Father, the so sovereign God of the universe. We can approach His throne, it says, of grace with confidence. Why? So that we can receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now, I don't know about you. Well, let me tell you a story first, okay? My daughter, she has two dogs. One's a small one and one's a bigger one. Not real big, but the bigger one is uh, like a, an Alaskan Husky type dog. I don't know how that dog keeps any hair on his body because it's all on the furniture, it's on the carpet, it's, it's, it's everywhere. She's got one of those robots, you know, that go around and, and yeah. you program it and it, it stops the thing and then turns and goes... And, so this dog, this older one, whenever you pet the younger dog, that dog's got to be petted. Oh yeah, come right up to you, butt right into the conversation, lay his, his hair shedding face on your lap. And as you well know, I wear a lot of black because it's slimming. <laughs> Oh my gosh, talk about a needy, a needy dog. And you know, I don't know about you, but it's hard to like 
a dog like that. It's hard to like a person like that when they're, they're just so needy. They have to, you know, tell you all about their problems every time they call you and... I better shut up. <laughs> it says here, listen... Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy. What's mercy? Mercy is God not giving you what you deserve. And grace, what's grace? Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve, okay? Unmerited favor, if you will. Let us... Uh, receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Sometimes I wonder whether God looks at me like that dog. I'm so dang needy. I'm always, Lord, I need this, I need that. Lord, can you please help me with this? Can you please help me with that? I'm serious. Oh, yeah. I won't even tell you some of the stuff I ask him about. We're in church. <laughs> Philippians 4.19 says this. Now, I want you to think about you're in, you're in front of the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in your time of need. And here's what God says. And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. My God will meet all, not just some, all of your needs according to the riches in Christ Jesus. Well, let me ask you this. How rich is Christ Jesus? He's the richest. He is the richest human in the universe. He is God come in the flesh. He is a human being in heaven right now. We don't, we don't really picture this. Making intercession for us to the Father. He is the unique person of the universe. There is none like him, never ever will be. And it says here, my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches. If you remember back a few years back, I brought a couple of tape measures to church, okay? One was like one of those kind that a seamstress was, would use, you know, like this. The other is the type that we use when we go out and plot land or whatever. It's a 150 footer. So which one do you want God to measure for you? To meet your needs. You want the 150 footer or you want the three footer? I want the 150 footer because I need it. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's a very, very pleasant thing to think that as we face the present time, we can trust in God to meet all of our needs. So we understand our purpose in life to glorify God. We don't dwell in the past. We don't live in the past. We face the present, and we make an effort. Let me read Proverbs, and you're welcome to turn there if you want to. I'm going to be, going to be in Proverbs chapter 2. And I read this again this morning, and it just, it just amazes me. Listen to what the author of Proverbs, which would be Solomon, son of David, says. He said, my son, I'll wait till you get there, Proverbs chapter 2. Verse 1, he says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, so this is going to be an if-then uh, um, formula. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight or intelligence and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those whose walk is blameless, for he guards the course of the just, 
and protects the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand what is right and just and fair every good path. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who leave the straight paths and walk in the dark ways, who delight in doing wrong and rejoice in the perverseness of evil, whose paths are crooked and, who's de and who are devious in their ways. <sighs> you know, it's not by great talent that people succeed necessarily. A lot of times it's just by sheer determination and drive. I'm going to read one more scripture to you and then we're going to have communion. In terms of communion, uh, we do not limit communion to just members of our church. If you're, if you're a Christian person here, you are welcome to take communion with us, your brother, your sister. But in 1 Peter chapter, or excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 3. 2 Peter 1, 3. It says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of Him who has called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. In other words, you can imitate God. You can start becoming more like Jesus Christ. That's participation in the divine nature. And escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. He goes on to give us a formula here. It's a progressive formula. It says, for this very reason, make every effort. What was the last point I give you? Make an effort. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to, God, and to godliness you would add brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. And you'll notice that love is the highest progression here. It says, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I would love to be able to say this. I have glorified you on earth I have finished the work that you have given me to do. Let's pray. So, Father in heaven, indeed, please help us, Lord. Please bless us, Father. We ask you to help us to finish the work, to find out what the work is, to, you know, you said in your, in your word that the work of God is to believe in Jesus Christ, and that's our work. So, Father, that's what we want to express to you this morning. We want to express to you that we believe in you. We trust in you. We cling to you, Lord. Help us to imitate Jesus Christ, for he lived a life of love, and we need to live that same life. Pray with me, would you? Dear Father in heaven, please forgive me for my sins. Please cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to make this year and this day one for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, if the guys could come forward, we'll take commune. Young. I forgot the young.
The one on the bottom has got the little bread, and the one on the top is wine. Fruit juice. <laughs> what is fruit juice? I'm just kidding. What kind of juice is it? Grape juice. Grape juice. <laughs> 